this will be a demonstration of how Fibonacci spirals can be applied to reversal areas without using the high and low prices of single candles. Instead, it is possible to use one high and one low price from the reversal point, so that it's still in a vertical position, but the end point extends much further than a single candle. In fact, you could use two spirals, and usually they would be close enough to overlap and point in opposite directions. Then you could do something similar on a horizontal plane to form a rectangle. With these spirals in horizontal positions, it's also preferable they be close enough to overlap and they point in opposite directions to each other. Areas of overlap in the rectangle can mark approximate price ranges of interest. Most noticeable here are what turned out to be the boundaries of a gap down. And although the upswing didn't reach the 420 area or make direct contact with the spiral which was arcing down during the downswing, it was quite close, and in reality not all areas marked by the Fibonacci spirals will be directly contacted. Given the context of the established uptrend weakening and the significance of the area under 400 combined with the spiral arcing down during progressively stronger downswings, these spirals were still useful in identifying an area of price and time of interest in this context, opposition to the upswing. Although information from these spirals could still be useful into October, it would be beneficial to use more recent context after the clear uptrend began to weaken. In other words, once more neutral to bearish context appeared with this range of sharper downswings, it would be time to base new spirals on these developments. With reversal points, even if they're in a near horizontal range, it's similar to single candles in that spiral positions will be based on the highest and lowest prices of reversal points in the area. Since price is progressively dropping in this bearish context, it's preferable to have short to medium term coverage of the spirals to the right side and facing down. Forming a rectangle with the two other spirals in horizontal positions isn't that useful in this case since price is not likely to swing back up towards that 370 area where there's convergence within the rectangle of the spirals. The main focus as price falls will certainly be on the intersection with the area where these spirals arc down. Again, contact with the spirals doesn't guarantee support for rebounds. Once price is nearing and eventually contacts these spirals, it just indicates in the context of the developing downtrend, these areas in both price and time are likely to produce opposition meaning there's greater potential for neutral to bullish movement. Similar to the last example where there are two or more spirals, it's usually normal to see a pair of spirals rotate on the same general path, even if the pointers aren't in the same direction. Now let's see the flexibility of Fibonacci spirals as we change the orientation of the spirals but still use the same price ranges. Usually most emphasis is placed on the vertical orientations, so let's see what happens if we also make the change of pointing the two horizontal spirals in the same direction but at different price levels. The end result is similar coverage to the right side in the short to medium term, as price and the spirals continue down to the same approximate areas. 